Hey guys, what's going on? So in this video, we'll be learning about how to work with remote repositories. Now, remote repository is in most case hosted online. There are many rep online repositories, uh, remote repositories like Bitbucket, Amazon AWS CodeCommit, GitHub, etc. And the most popular one among them is the GitHub. Now at this point, many of you who have heard about GitHub before might get confused with Git and GitHub. Well, let me tell you the difference between them right now. So Git is a version control tool that helps you manage your code in your local machine, uh, while GitHub is a cloud-based online hosting service that lets you manage your Git repositories remotely. The main motive people make use of GitHub is to publicize their work and people from all around the world can actually see your work and can even collaborate to it under your supervision. Alright, so in this video, we'll be making use of GitHub over the others due to its large popularity among the developers. Okay, so let's begin. First of all, you need to create an account on GitHub. It's really easy to make one. So go ahead and do that uh, by visiting the official site of GitHub, which is github.com. I'll give the link to that in the description below. Okay, so once you have done it, let's go ahead and create our first repository on GitHub. In order to create a first repository, uh, go ahead and click on the new button over here and put a repository name. So let's name it as something like uh, debunker test. And you can also put some descriptions, say, this is a test repo. So the reason why majority of people put their uh, repository online is to make it public. And I highly recommend you to make, make it public as well. Uh, if you're actually deciding to put your repository online on sites like GitHub, because it will actually attract lots of lots of collaborators and contributors, and they will actually help make your repository look clean and uh, improve your repository. Now, in this case, since we don't want to attract any collaborators and contributors, we are going to put it as pub private. And you can also initialize your repository with a readme, git ignore and license as well. Uh, we won't be doing this because it's not a major project. So let's create the repository right away. After you do that, you'll be redirected to this page. Now, at this point, only one important thing to notice is this URL. Now you go ahead and copy this URL by clicking over here. And let's add a create a new file as it's already suggesting us get started by creating a new file. Let's create a new file. And let's name that file like test folder and inside that file let's add some this is a test folder this is another line cool and now let's go ahead and click on commit new file once you do that you'll have a fresh repository called zbunker test which is actually a private and you have a folder saying test folder which is actually a file i should have renamed it okay let's go ahead and rename it as well okay well you know what uh, let's actually go ahead and make use of the local repository uh, to actually rename this from test folder to test file i think that will be a good use case or you can say an example to work with okay so let me come back so we have an online repository zbunker test hosted online and which has a test folder which is actually a file and uh, cool so we have our online repository all set up now let's go back to the local repository or you can say our local machine and then commit these changes from local machine to this online repository. Okay, so I'm in my local machine and I have the git bash opened. Okay, so the first step is to clone that online repository into our local machine. At this point, let me tell you that we don't have any git initialized. So if I go ahead and type git uh, status, you'll see it will give me a fatal error because we don't have any .git folder. Now let me go ahead and clone that online repository into my local machine. So to clone, you have to type git clone and paste that URL you copied. Enter. Now it will clone and you can see that we have a zbunker test folder, which is actually the name of the online repository. So with this, we have successfully cloned that online repository into our local directory. Now inside it, you can see we have a test folder with the two contents that we edited online. Okay, so git clone would actually create a duplicate of the repository that we had online. Now, one thing to notice is that by default, uh, when we do git clone, it initializes the dot git for you. So if I go ahead and cd into the zbunker test, and if I type git status, you notice that we didn't get any error, which means we have the git folder initialized. Okay, so now let's go ahead and change the name to test file. And let's add two to three changes. Say this is a change made inside local repo. All right, so let me go ahead and commit this to our local repository. So to do that, type git add and git commit with a message saying initial commits. 
Cool. So this would actually save the content in the local repository. Now, if I go and take a look at the online repository, okay, you would see that the, the changes that we made are not reflected over here. So in order to reflect those changes in online repository, you would have to push those changes. So this can be done by a git push command. Okay, so now before pushing the changes, it's always good practice to pull down any changes that have been made to your repository while you are working in your local repository. Okay, for example, if you're working on a team, there would be there would be so many people working on different features and they might have even pushed some of the features and changes to your current repository while you are working on it. So by pulling those changes, you are actually updating your local repository with the changes that are being made online. Uh, I know this is a lot to sink in. Um, to tell you more about this, let's take an example. So while you're actually renaming this to test file and adding these changes, let's say that you have a teammate who has also cloned that repository and made some changes and pushed those changes. Now, say, let's say he pushed a change like test file two, test file three or something to your online repository. Now, if you go ahead and take a look at the online repository, you would see these test file two, test file three, but in your local repository, these changes are not being pulled. So in order to pull those changes, you have to do a git pull command and it's always a good practice to git pull the stuffs before you push so that your local repository is up to date with what exactly is happening in, with your online repository. Okay, so let me go ahead and do a git pull. In order to do that, type git pull origin and the branch which is main. Now if I go back to the online repository, you will notice that by default github initializes the branch with main branch. And the origin, well, it is referring to the repository itself. Okay, and one more thing before moving on, uh, working with GitHub is a complete different workflow in itself and is currently beyond the scope of Git. I can actually create a separate video series on GitHub. Just comment below and let me know if you want to learn more about it. I'll be happily creating a video on that. All right, so as you can see, it's written already up to date. That's because we don't have any other person or any other updates that have been pushed into the online repository while we're working on the local repository. Now let's go ahead and push these changes to our online repository. Now I will once again show you the last time what exactly do we have here. So we have only a test folder that we have changed to test file and we have actually changed the content and more precisely we added some lines I guess a line right and we need to update these changes in, your, in our online repository. So let's do that. Now, if you remember, I told you that if, if you want to update your online repository, you need to do a git push. So if you want to do a git push, type git push, then origin and the branch you want to push into, so main branch and hit enter. Now all these changes will be pushed into our current repository, online repository. Now if I go and take a look at that, cool, you will notice that the update has been successfully committed. Now this test file, test folder is renamed to test file and we have that couple of lines that we added so you are done you have successfully pushed the changes to your online repository okay now the last thing i want to show you before i end this video is how to commit and push branches all right so let's create a test branch say git checkout dash b test and let's actually make some changes this is a change made in the test branch oops i made some typos there cool now let's go ahead and commit commit dash am updates in test branch hit enter now if you want to go ahead and update this test branch or more specifically i should say create this branch inside your online repository you have to push these changes but as a convention you always need to pull down the changes if they have been made by typing git pull origin main so there are no changes being made and let's push this by typing git push origin and the branch which you are working on so branch we're working on is test branch so we will type test and hit enter now this would not only push these changes but it will also create a new branch called test branch as it's evident over here so if i go ahead and uh, take a look at the github repository you notice that a new message has appeared test had recent pushes done a minute ago and we have two branches let's go ahead and compare and pull request although this is out of the scope for us right now and let's create a pull request and let's merge it and commit merge cool so if i go back to code you'd see that the we have successfully merged the changes from the test branch to our master branch 
I can say main branch because in GitHub repository, we don't have a master branch. We call it as a main branch. Cool. Okay, so with this, you are done. We are successfully created an online repository. We actually cloned that repository to our local machine. We did some changes in our local machine and we pushed those changes into our online repository. All right, that was all for this video. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you really did, make sure to support us by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. You can also support us by spreading the word to others who really want to learn more about Git and other tech stacks. This will not only help us to grow our channel, but it will also allow us to help others. Thank you guys for watching this video. See you in the next one.